Hi, this is the first of a multi-part video series I'm going to be doing on the HTML canvas element or canvas object and how I can link that to 2D arrays. We're going to talk about multi-dimensional arrays in future videos a little bit. And we're going to be using the HTML canvas to draw, to create animations, maybe even get a game involved in this. Now some purists out there and very heavy full stack developers might have opinions as to how what I'm saying is either an inefficient way of doing it or the wrong way of doing it or maybe an insecure way of doing it. The goal here is just to learn some coding and my audience is more you know, high school students and people who are new to programming. And so yeah, are there going to be better ways to do it? Sure, are there going to be ways that take less lines of code? Yes, but I'm trying to get to the basics of coding here. Now normally I would do these videos in Scrimba. If you've never seen scrimba.com, it's quite amazing. But unfortunately the Scrimba interface can't record the canvas object. So it's the one thing it can't do. And I actually recorded my series on Scrimba and then as I was playing it back to edit, realized unfortunately it can't record the canvas. And they're aware of that issue and they're potentially going to fix it, but this series will be on uh, YouTube instead. Now, any sort of links that I have, they'll be down in the description. Uh, and I do have some recommended reading links here for you. It's great to have a reference for, uh, while you're working, you know, a split screen or, or a second monitor where you can have that reference. And the HTML DOM canvas object reference from W3 Schools is quite great. Uh, this slideshow will be available as well. Uh, so that these links are, are available to you. So the Eloquent JavaScript online book is also a great, great read. And they have a section on drawing on the canvas. There's the W3 Schools Canvas tutorial. So actually you could just go ahead and follow that tutorial and you don't have to pay attention to my videos at all. And then also there's amazing resources out there for multi-dimensional arrays, but this one's a great one for multi-dimensional arrays by example, and specifically for JavaScript, because arrays do function differently in JavaScript versus other languages. Uh, and as much as I like to teach computer science sort of language agnostic, we are going to be talking specifically JavaScript and HTML. So briefly, I want to talk about 2D arrays. Uh, I'll get into this more in the future, but we need to discuss this because when you're trying to get an element from a 2D array, you actually have to do your Y value first. So it goes Y, X. And the reason for that is we have to get which row we're doing first before we can get the item, which we call the column. Here I've got this pretend three by three array, which I'll sometimes call the matrix. And so if we're going to get my array element one, two, so it's the one -th element in the first dimension. So that would be this array right here. And the twoth element actually refers to the twoth element of that array. And so I'm specifically talking about this nine here. And visually how that looks is you're going down to row one and over to column two. And so that would be this nine right there. Now, how does that relate to your screen or the canvas? Well, the screen or canvas is kind of like a Cartesian plane. And so it has X's and Y's as well but we're gonna treat those X's and Y's properly where we do X first, so we go to the right first, and then Y second. But of course there's a twist here as well. So Y does not count up vertically like it does on the Cartesian plane. Y actually counts up downward, well I guess it's still vertically, but downward. So zero, zero or the origin is in the top left-hand corner. And there's some history there with refreshing, refresh rates for monitor, or how the monitor refreshes from the top left uh, to the right and down. Uh, but essentially just keep in mind that your origin is in the top left hand corner and the Y value goes down. So this is going to be important later on. All right, so here I am in Replit. Uh, Replit is a great free coding environment. It's wonderful. And like I said, I'd, I'll normally be doing this in Scrimba, but for now we'll do this in Replit. And uh, the link to this REPL will be available to you so you can fork this REPL and, and, and try some stuff out on your own. The HTML file is very simple. I just have a div that I called container so that I can add or remove uh, to and from it. And then here's my canvas. So this is the canvas tag. So the canvas tag works very similar to other tags in HTML. You'll have an opening tag and you'll have a closing tag. And then you want to give it an ID so that you can talk to it or about it in JavaScript. It'll have a width, it'll have a height, typically widescreen, but we're gonna keep it a square 400 by 400. And then there are things you can do to make the canvas have a different colored border or background or all sorts of different things you can do with your CSS. Now I'm not a CSS genius by any means, and there are a million courses out there for CSS, but all I've done here is given it a one pixel solid black border right there. And that's it pretty much. The body does call a function. It calls the initialize function here, which is the function I'm gonna be focusing on in my JavaScript file. So over here in the JavaScript file, 
I have some comments at the top here just to talk about the different functions or properties that I'll be dealing with throughout this multi-part series. I might add or remove uh, some things from this. And then I've got some constants for some colors that I might work with. And then here's the initialization function. Now these videos aren't really scripted, so we're just gonna see where we go with these. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is, is just how do we get a handle for our canvas? So we can create a variable that goes and gets the canvas from our HTML document. And you may have seen this before, document.getElementById, and my, my element ID was demo canvas for my canvas. So I'm just gonna call that canvas one. And if I want to add a canvas through JavaScript, I can do that. So this is getting the canvas from the HTML, but what if we wanted to create another uh, canvas or do all of our work in JavaScript, which is, which is fair game. So there's actually a create element command or function or method that takes uh, what the element tag name is. So in this case, it would be a canvas. And so I want to create a canvas. And so what this does is it creates the canvas in memory, but it doesn't put the canvas on the HTML page yet. So let's give that canvas uh, some attributes. Let's give it a width, maybe we'll say 200. Let's give it a height, say 100. And you can also give it some styling so we can give it a border and, and and that sort of thing. And so in order to do that, you would say canvas.style.css text. And of course, all of these are canvas2. So I just need to make sure that I'm talking about canvas2, the variable. And my CSS text for this would be very similar to the CSS text you saw in my HTML file. So I'm going to give it a border. My border is going to be one pixel wide. And just for the sake of giving it a different color, let's maybe give it a red. So FF0000 uh, for red. Now it's still not gonna show up on my HTML page if I run my code here because I haven't added it to the document. So the code for that would be document dot and then whatever we want to add it to. Well, I wanna add it to that div that I had. So I'm gonna get element by ID container and that gives me a handle on that div. And in there I can add or append a child, a child object. And the child object I want to append to that is canvas two. So that line right there on line 34 is what adds my second canvas to the HTML page. Let's run the code and there I've got my 100 by 200 uh, second canvas. Now I'm not gonna have two canvases on my screen, but I just wanted to show you that you can get a handle for the canvas and you can also create a canvas in, in JavaScript itself. Okay, so back to one canvas here. Now, how do we actually draw on the canvas? How do we do that? Well, now that I have a canvas on the screen, we're going to get the tools for ourselves that actually draw on that canvas. So the canvas is just the physical, or in this case, virtual physical, but it has its width, it has its height, has a border, and then it has the material that you'll draw on, but that's all the canvas knows. It doesn't really have drawing tools. You know, if you're Bob Ross and you're at, the, you're at the canvas, all your tools are in your hand. So we call that the context. I actually wish it had a much better name. I'm sure there's a good reason for it being called the context. Essentially, every tutorial you're ever going to watch or see for JavaScript uses CTX as the short form for their context. So, hey, why break the mold? So let context equal. We're going to ask the canvas, so canvas one, for its context. And so I'm gonna ask it to give me, so get, your context, and there are two ways to draw on a canvas. You can draw on a canvas in three-dimensional space or two-dimensional space, and we're very much going to stick with two-dimensional space here. As a matter of fact, the canvas can use your hardware. So if you're doing three-dimensional space, it could actually use your graphics card to render graphics for you. All right, so now I have a variable called CTX. That is the variable I am going to do most of my work on. This canvas variable here, not even all that useful. So realistically speaking, I could potentially just do this so that I get the demo canvas and get its context. But in the event that I want to make some changes to my canvas on the fly or, or something like that, it would be best to have our, our variable available to us. All right, so one thing, the last thing I'm gonna do in this particular video is I'm gonna draw a single pixel somewhere on my on my canvas and then in the next video I'll show you how to draw rectangles, fill them, uh, do outlines and circles and arcs and that kind of thing. So now that I have my context, 
I'm going to draw on, on it using the context. So the context, again, is the tool, uh, the paintbrush, it is the eraser, it's all of those things. So in order to draw a single pixel, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can actually create a pixel, you can actually create image data and place that somewhere on your canvas, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to place a rectangle that is a single one by one rectangle. So in order to do a rectangle, there's two commands you could use. There's fill rect for fill rectangle, and there's stroke rect. Stroke rect uh, doesn't fill the inside of the rectangle. It's just an outline or a border of a rectangle. We're just going to use fill rect. And you have to give it an X and a Y. So let's take a look here. We've got an X, a Y, a width, and a height. Pretty standard self-explanatory. So my width and my height are definitely going to be one and one because I want a one by one rectangle so that it is a single pixel on my canvas. And I get to pick an X and a Y to where I want it to go. This is a 400 by 400 canvas. So let's just put it somewhere in the top left hand corner here. So let's say 150 by 100. So the 150 is my X, the 100 is my Y. And now I'll run my code. And when I run this code, I get a single tiny pixel right here on my canvas that depending on the quality of this video and resolution of your screen, you might not even be able to see. So just to kind of further the point here, I'm going to change my width and height to 10, so a 10 by 10, and run it again, and you'll see I've got this 10 by 10 rectangle on my canvas now. And so that is how you can draw a rectangle. So before you watch my next video on outlined rectangles, circles, arcs, and paths, why don't you play around with some of the tools that are listed up here? Play around with it on your own and see what you can do before you get to the next one.